So this is knowledge for section 8.5, Areas of Quadrilaterals. If you haven't done so already, make sure you uh, stop the video at this time, go back and read section 8.5 before continuing on. Uh, we've already looked at uh, one quadrilateral, that being the rectangle. Remember, that's kind of where we're building everything off of. But today we're going to look at um, several other quadrilaterals and how we can find their areas and we'll come up with some area formulas that we can use for those. To begin with we're going to start out with a trapezoid. Uh, the area of a trapezoid is equal to half the product of its altitude and the sum of the length of its bases. So in terms of how we write that with a, a formula, we're going to write it like this with a um, area equals one half b1 plus b2 times h where b1 and b2 are the parallel sides of the trapezoid and h is the distance between those parallel sides okay that will be the area formula that we can use for trapezoids now we're coming up with that formula by thinking about a trapezoid basically as two triangles with different bases but the same height and that's how we're getting this one half b1 plus b2 so it, it's like we've taken a, a trapezoid and broken it into two triangles now let's next let's take a look at how we can use that formula <laughs> So let's take a look at example one here where we want to apply this area formula to a trapezoid. We have a trapezoid over here with two bases of five and nine. We know that those are bases because these are both right angles. Therefore, QR and TS must be parallel to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those and plug those into the formula. Six represents the altitude of that uh, trapezoid because uh, it's perpendicular to both the bases. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by writing down my formula. A equals one half B1 plus B2 times H. Now I'm going to plug in what I know. One half times B1 plus B2, so that would be five plus nine, times H. H is six. And now that's when if you want to go to the calculator or if you can do that in your head, either way it doesn't matter to come up with that area. I'm going to do this in my head. If I have 5 plus 9, that's equal to 14. So it's like 1 half times 14 times 6. And 1 half times 14 is 7, so that's like 7 times 6. And 7 times 6 is 42. Therefore, we have an area of 42 square units. Okay? And don't forget your units on that. So um, the next figure that we'd like to be able to find a area of is, is a parallelogram. And uh, the nice thing about a parallelogram is really all a parallelogram is is a sheared rectangle. Basically we've taken a rectangle and we've we've just slid it a little bit and in reality it comes out that it's the exact same um, area as a rectangle. So here's what you want to think about. When I look at a parallelogram, if I were to take a right triangle off of one side, say this right triangle right here, and if I were to take that right triangle and just bring it right over to this side right here, okay, and plug it on here, it would make a rectangle. Now, I haven't changed the area at all. It would give me a rectangle that has the exact same length and width. The only difference is with a parallelogram, instead of it being a length and a width, we're going to call it the base of a parallelogram, which is this distance and this distance. And then when we measure the height, it's got to be that distance that's perpendicular to the uh, the two bases. So that would represent so the, the length of that altitude there. So that's what the height would represent. So now let's see if we can apply that formula as well.
In example two here, I'm given a that I want to find the area of this parallelogram. So we know the figure is a parallelogram. So to find that area, I'm going to use the area formula for a parallelogram, which is a equals the base times the height. So now I, all I need to do is figure out if I want to find the area, what those two numbers are. Well, as I look at my my parallelogram over here, um, the bases are parallel sides that I have a height from. So if if 15 is my base, then 6 would be the, since that, that line would represent the altitude, 6 would represent the height of that uh, particular uh, parallelogram. So the 8s are just the length of the other two sides, which I don't need because I don't have the altitude from those other two sides. So the area of this parallelogram is going to be equal to the base, which is 15, times the height, which is 6. And I know that 15 times 6 is equal to 90. And since we have no units on it, we're just going to call that square units. Remember, area is always measured in square units. So the last new. Um, formula I'd like to take a look at in this lesson is a formula for finding the area of any quadrilateral where you know the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Um, now in, in some of our special quadri quadrilaterals we know that this applies to kites and it also applies to, um, uh, well, to squares, to um, uh, rhombuses. So there, there's a few of them where we know that their their diagonals are perpendicular to each other so we can find the area of those. And then just in general if we're given something about uh, diagonals being perpendicular to each other we can use this area formula. And the area formula just says that if, um, if we know that the diagonal is perpendicular, then we can take one half of d1 times d2, where d1 and d2 are the lengths of those two diagonals. And really, that's being generated by thinking about, um, thinking about it from the standpoint of right triangles. <laughs>so let's take a look at example three here then it says find the area of the kite math where mt is twelve and ah is seven well those just happen to be the lengths of the two diagonals therefore it's very easy to actually go ahead and find those areas so here's the lengths of the diagonals mt and ah so i can say that the area is equal to um, one half times d1 d2 okay so it's all multiplication so area is equal to 1 half times 12 times 7 okay now if i do that if i go through and if i go through and multiply that out then the area would be equal to that's like 1 half times 12 which is 6 6 times 7 is 42, therefore the area would be 42 square units. Finally, let's take a look at example 4 here. It says find the area of trapezoid ABCD. Now, we're not just given exactly what we're looking for, so we have to kind of figure that out. I do know that if I'm going to find the area of that trapezoid, I need to use the area formula for a trapezoid, which is equal to 1 half the sum of B1 plus B2 times the height. So I need to figure out what B1 and B2 are, and I need to figure out what the height is. Well, I know that my height is that the length of an altitude, and remember the altitude has to be perpendicular to both bases. Therefore, 4.9 could represent my height. In that case, I can look at the trapezoid where this is one base, and this right here is the other base. So to find that area, I can say area is equal to 1 half. Now, B1 could be 5.7. And B2, I would take these two values and add them together, which would be 7.9. And then my height is 4.9. Okay. So if I do that, 
to find that area, I'm just going to multiply that out on my calculator to get that value. So then the answer to that would be 33.32. And once again, that would have to be units squared. So this would represent the area of that trapezoid. Thank <music> you.